Do you ever wonder how you can get more power out of your engine? Heck yeah, so do I, brother. I love my catfish, but it could benefit from making a couple extra ponies. The thing is, is I like the hardware under the hood, so I don't want to go messing around with bolting on a supercharger or a turbocharger. I can go without the whines and whistles as long as I can listen to the harmony of that sweet LS1 doing its thing. I also don't want to squirt in NOS. I don't want to juice. So if I don't want to use a supercharger or turbocharger or NOS, how the heck am I going to make more power? Well, I got this thinking that the solution to my problem is an unlikely source. It protects all of us here on Earth, and it's dwindling away at a rapid rate. The ozone. Well, today we're going to see if ozone can be the secret ingredient into making more power in your engine. Let's go. Big thanks to Deck for sponsoring today's video. Everyone loves trucks, but are you tired of your stuff rattling around and making a mess? Does your back hurt from constantly crawling into your truck to find something? Well, stop letting that bed go unchecked and get decked. Deck makes organizing, accessing, and securing my tools and dirt bike gear easy. Their full bed length drawer system is simple to install and can carry up to 200 pounds each. That's half your mom. They even roll out waist high so I'm not breaking my back to grab something. And up top, this floor has a true 2,000 pound payload capacity. See, I could put two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight dirt bikes if I could fit them. And what I love most is that the drawers slide right underneath the weatherproof floor, keeping everything I have safe from Mother Nature and thieves. Speaking of safety, if your tailgate is locked, you can't open the drawers or remove the system. They also offer a full line of accessories like various toolboxes, bags, cargo tie downs, and other handy items for maximum organizational efficiency. The deck drawer system is 100% made in the USA, backed by a three year no hassle warranty and a second to none customer service team ready to answer all your questions. So ditch that messy truck bed and click the link in the description below or go to deck.com slash bumper to bumper to get free shipping on your deck drawer system today. Now let's get back to some B to B. Slide me in for us. In the quest for more power, there's a simple equation. You got more air plus more fuel equals more power. If we look at the air component of that equation a bit more, what we really need is more oxygen. Oxygen mixed with a fuel source allows for combustion to take place and that combustion is the driving force for creating horsepower. Now when we're talking turbochargers and superchargers, that's forced induction. And forced induction works to increase the power of an engine by forcing in more air and therefore more oxygen into the combustion chamber. Bolt-ons like those physically force compressed air into the intake. But there are other ways to add more oxygen oxygen into the mix and that's using chemicals. Chemicals like nitrous oxide. Nitrous oxide or N2O works in creating more power potential because it carries with it an oxygen molecule. When it gets shot into the intake or directly into the cylinders, depending on the configuration, during the compression stroke, that increasing pressure causes the NO bond to break. And the result of that is you have an added oxygen molecule inside the cylinder that can participate in the combustion reaction. Now before I said power potential because more oxygen by itself is not going to get you any additional power gains. You need to supply more fuel to maintain your air fuel ratio. If we burn more fuel in every power stroke, we make more power. If we can burn twice as much fuel now due to that added oxygen, we can double the energy during combustion. If twice the energy is produced from combustion, the pistons move faster. More specifically, if twice the energy is produced, the pistons will move faster by a factor of the square root of two. Here's a little equation. Just solve, just solve for piston speed. Freaking genius now, man. Is summer out? Cause we're back in school. <laughs> But here is the catch. Nitrous oxide systems take up space in a car. So just like anything else, you have to find a place to store it. So think about it. If you got two big old tanks of nitrous, they're filling up your back seat. Where's your grandma and your mom gonna sit when you're driving them around town? Nowhere. You're gonna, you're gonna have to put them on the roof, Florida style. Another downside to using NOS is all the hardware is heavy. Yeah, sure, you'll be able to make more power, but depending on how much power you're making, it could outweigh the effect of all the weight. A couple weeks ago, we did a show discussing weight and power here on B2B. If you're interested, you should click here and watch. And while you're at it, why don't you like and subscribe? That really helps us out. Thank you. Mm. That's me kissing you. An inevitable shortcoming to NOS is that you have to use it sparingly. You can't run nitrous oxide continuously on an everyday driver. The limited supply of nitrous oxide actually gets used up pretty quickly. 
That's why drag racers and Fast and Furious guys only use it intermittently. So that's how nitrous works, sneaking in a bit of free oxygen so you can add more fuel so you can make more power. So where does ozone fit into this equation? How can ozone help us in our quest to make power gains? Let's start with what ozone is exactly. Ozone consists of three oxygens connected via a single bond and a double bond. Technically, ozone should be represented by a hybrid resonance structure. And to explain all that, you'd need to dabble in a bit of quantum physics, but we don't have time for that right now. The key concept though to point out is that there are three oxygen atoms per molecule. When you break the bonds in ozone, it yields pure oxygen gas. So by comparing this to NOS from before, what's better than one free oxygen molecule? Three free oxygen molecules. That means we can burn three times the amount of fuel with each stroke. Now that we understand why we want to use ozone, how in the world are we going to get it into my catfish to produce a little bit more power? Well, there are two main components that I came up with. The first method we can consider is modeling our ozone injection system after NOS. We generate the ozone away from the block, we store it safely, and then we deliver it to the cylinder upon command. We push a little magic ozone button, except instead of red, it's green. This would use nearly the exact same hardware as a nitrous oxide system. In simple terms, the necessary components would include your ozone, the bottles to store it in, the feed lines, the intake fixtures, and the electronics to control all of it. Very similar to how NOS works now. Instead of having nitrous oxide in the bottle, you have ozone. The other option we could entertain is to incorporate the ozone generator as a component of the intake. So if you think about it for a second, if the ozone generator is on board, the catfish could have, in theory, a regenerative power adder. So now that we know what ozone is and understand why it could be more effective than nitrous oxide, we have to figure out where to get it. An ozone generator, or as some call it, an ozonator, is a device that simply produces ozone. The machines were actually developed to be used for cleaning purposes. Ozone has antibacterial and antiviral properties, so it's great for purifying air and water. Most personal use ozonators produce ozone by taking the oxygen, O2, from ambient air and recreating it to produce ozone, O3. Synthesis of ozone happens by passing ambient oxygen through high voltage electrodes. These electrodes serve to provide ample energy to disassociate the diatomic oxygen molecule into individual atoms. These atoms then rearrange into O3 and O due to an increased energy input. One of the main hassles with nitrous oxide systems is that the storage tanks need to be constantly refilled. With an ozonator on board, the driver can choose to use or produce more ozone at will. So imagine hitting your little green button to dump your ozone reserve in a straight line, and then hitting a red button to start generating ozone in the corners. So I don't know about everyone watching, but my engineering mind got really curious about this. And this is the fact that sold me on this idea but I can't quite believe that I'd be the first person to think of this. Well, it turns out that I was not the first person to think of this. There are some mad scientists out there who've attempted greatness, but some sneaky variables have kept them from getting those bonus horsepower. And there are four main reasons why ozone injection has failed as a power adder. The first reason is ozone exposure causes embrittlement and shrinkage to elastomers. <laughs> Don't want that. Elastomers are essential to operating a vehicle. One type of elastomer is rubber. Cars rely on rubbers in many ways, whether it's keeping air in your tires or oil from leaking between your blocks and trans, these rubbers need to maintain their pliability to effectively hold these seals. If ozone comes in contact with these rubber items, such as gaskets and tires, they can cause their respective systems to poorly perform or even fail over time. But if you're a racer and you're rebuilding your engine and rebuilding all those components, you don't necessarily care about that. The degradation of those rubber components doesn't outweigh the power performance you're gonna get in the short term. But another issue with ozone is the immense energy input needed to produce it. Even if we were able to generate this amount of energy with ease, we'd still have a problem. This much energy would generate a huge amount of heat. Unless you want that ozone generator to create enough heat to cause a ton of damage in the engine, you're gonna need a way to cool it all. Beefing up the cooling system means adding more cooling fluid and hardware, which also means more weight, and now the cycle continues. Oh, oh, we'll go this way. And to make things worse, you can't really store ozone. If you try to store ozone in a tank similar to nitrous oxide, it'll break down. Ozone is unstable at high concentration and has a pretty short half-life, meaning that over time, your stored ozone will decay into plain old 
oxygen. Now this isn't actually a major setback since ordinary oxygen is what feeds the combustion reaction, but it's definitely wasteful in terms of energy. At that point, it would be way more energy efficient just to bottle, store, and inject diatomic oxygen. But you wouldn't want to use pure oxygen anyways. We did an entire episode about NOS and talked about using pure oxygen. If you want to learn more, click here. I already did the work. I don't need to explain it in this video. Go watch this other video. To cap it off, the most critical reason why ozone isn't feasible is the collection of legitimate health risk it poses to humans. Part of the genesis for this episode is James and I on a D-list did a review of an ozone generator to reduce the smell of your car. And we found out that ozone generators are illegal in California. And I thought, oh dude, ozone's, ozone's good, right? Like ozone's good. Well, it's good when it's way up there, but it's not good for us if we're breathing it in. Ozone has a high oxidizing potential, which causes respiratory issues, headaches, burning eyes, list that goes on and on. It's bad stuff, you don't wanna breathe it in. Remember earlier when we mentioned that ozone had antiviral and antibacterial properties? Yeah, that's because it kills things. The same mechanism that kills bacteria and viruses also harms human cells. The EPA even released an article discouraging readers from investing in ozone generator style air purifiers. In theory, these devices could remove weird smells or indoor air pollution from your house, but the EPA said the risks they pose way outweigh the potential benefits. But those are health benefits. What about power benefits? I put my actual engineering degree to use for once and I built an ozone generator. Stop right today there. We are Listen, I don't know if anybody told you, but California is an ozone, no zone, and uh, I didn't want to have to do this, but I'm gonna need you to bend over. I'm gonna handcuff you and arrest you. Max, you're not allowed to arrest people anymore. You know that. Okay, I didn't want to have to do this either, but I, I'm gonna have to write you a citation. I hope you learned your lesson. Uh, all right, so since we can't show the ozone generator, thanks, thanks so much for watching. Uh, until next week, bye for now. Come on, wheel on out of here. You can't be in the outro.